What's up, Sammy Aradix? Recently, it was my birthday, and my amazing girlfriend bought me this, a Tamiya Sand Sculpture. This video is about putting the chassis together, so join me. Let's see how it goes. We've done steps one to four on the sand sculpture. So we've got the gearbox built. And yeah, it's a really good build, all metal parts. Uh, no issues yet. Just a um, lot of grub screws and lining them up with the flat edges of the parts. So make sure you do that right. A lot of um, Fedlock and greasing as per the metal parts and gearboxes. But yeah, I'm loving the um, plastic. Let's move you around. I'm loving this plastic clear through cover in here so you can see the gears. But fantastic build, uh, quite like nothing I've ever done before. I mean, I've built a BBX, uh, CCO2, TTO1, Hornet, Monster Beetle. But yeah, this is all metal. Really good, really good so far. The shocks have been relatively simple to put together. Um, although from everything I've seen online and other videos, these shocks have a tendency to leak, so it's best to install them upside down rather than as the manual dictates. So I'm gonna, when I start installing these, they will be going upside down so they don't leak. But yeah, uh, compared to other shocks I've had to make on other builds, relatively easy. Here we are, we've just completed step 15, so we've pretty much got the framework on. We need to do the plastic insides now to keep all, everything nice and uh, safe from all the dirt and sand and all that sort of stuff. Put the survey, servo in and the electronics and all that jazz. Um, yeah, this build relies on a lot of grub screws, a lot of uh, Loctite. Um, gets quite sort of messy on your fingers and all that sort of stuff. So far, I'm loving it. It's been quite easy and quick to build in one respect because you are not cutting out plastic part trees all the time like you would with a conventional kit. With it all being metal, it's already there for you. So yeah, no cutting on the plastic. There is some little plastic bits, obviously, but not as much as you'd get in a standard kit. So it's flowing quite nicely. Um, you could have this easily done, easily in a day. Um, so there it is at the moment, step 15 complete. Well then, we are at step 16, which is asking us to get all the electronics together and ready. So I've built a couple of cars and this is the first time they're asking me to use the servo horn that comes with the servo. Usually the servo horn is pretty standard in all the kits I've built so far, but this is actually asking me to use the one that comes in the box and, and snip parts of, away. So... Yeah, a little bit different, but this whole build's a little bit different. So we're going to get the uh, receiver binded to uh, the transmitter, and we'll get all that put in, and then we'll get the insides all sorted out and continue with the build. All going well so far. Right then, so the plastic casing has been done. The electric servo is all in. A little bit messy in there. The uh, foam they give you to house the battery that goes along this bit is uh, not compliant with a modern day battery so um, you know it's just in there rattling might have to put some foam bits in there just to steady it up a bit a little bit untidy with the wires and stuff um i've tested it out and it seems to go forward steering works but the reverse is a bit hit and miss not sure why i have to do some more discovery with that 
But yeah, next bit is to put the wheels on and then the body, we need to order some paint and I think we're going to get a box art with it and yeah, go box art, try and earn my stripes. Looks like a difficult paint build to do, um, but you've got to give it a go, haven't you? You can always get another body and try something else if that doesn't work. But yeah, I'm really happy with it so far. I'm in the process of putting the tyres onto the sand scorcher now. Um, getting the centre bit in, the plastic bit, the wheel into the tyre is such a hard thing to do. If you've ever built one of these or one of its variants that has these wheels, like a Hornet or a Grasshopper, for example, you know how difficult that is. The way I did it was to leave the tyres on the radiator uh, for a few minutes and then just pure strength and muscle uh, shove them in there. It takes... Um, a bit of time, perseverance, but just keep at it, find your way of doing it. Like I said, mine was um, to get some heat on them, on the radiator, and just push them right in there. Good luck if you're doing this. The um, chasse is pretty much done, and um, just cosmetics really to do next. The body, you know, we're going to put the exhaust thing on the back there. It goes forwards, backwards, left and right, does what it's supposed to do. We are using the stock motor that came with it. Just a standard battery, it's a 3300 nymph in there at the moment. Uh, receiver, just one that hooks up to my transmitter and a basic core servo. So, you know, there's opportunity to change this uh, inside, make it faster, but I don't need to. I mean, it looks pretty smart, not like anything I've done before. Uh, obviously, the body is next. What I'd hope to do is grab it from the shelf. I wanted to put that body on it, the Herbie body. I thought it looked pretty cool. However, this is a monster beetle body and those little front bits down there mean it's not popping into its hole. Its mount is not happening. So yeah, the front end is not designed for this sand sculpture chassis, but that would have looked really cool, I think. I would have been happy with that, as it is. Uh, but it's not to be, unless I trim them off, and I don't want to do that just yet. So I am going to go box art, I think. I have ordered some paint, blue and white paint, to go with the design that's on the box down there. Got to give it a go, got to have a go at that. And if all else fails, I'll do something else. But that's it. For this video at the moment i'm quite happy with the progress of it it's a nice chassis to build and we'll see what the body brings eh thanks for watching until the next time